Hey, how you guys doing? This is Julio Villa coming to you with a quick video on um, on the piece that I just created with my kids. Um, on the background, well, the the this is like kind of like the behind the scenes of the PSD file. I didn't record a behind the scenes video for this because it's, I didn't have an extra hand to kind of help me out. My wife was kind of helping me out with uh, holding Jacob up there to kind of take that shot. <laughs> So we had our hands full, but uh, so I decided to make a quick video to show you the layers involved in creating this piece, this composite. Um, I'm gonna try to go through each layer, and uh, well, each I have them grouped in sections, but I'll open them up and I'll try to explain everything as easy as uh, I can. Um, it's not a very difficult image to create; it's pretty easy. It took us about 10, 15 minutes to shoot. You know, we, Juliana set up on the big wheel. We've, uh, you know, I had already had, it in, had her in mind how I wanted her to kind of, kind of, you know, express herself. So she did it really quick, shot her, took about five shots. And then we shot Jacob, my wife held him up and we had him, you know, we had, I had a fan blowing in front of them so I had them looking at the fan and just kind of making different expressions so it, it was pretty quick you know I took about five shots with him also and we, we, we got it pretty quick and um, you know I, uh, I, sh I went outside and I shot the front of the house that's our little house right there <laughs> and I, you know I, I already had it in mind I kind of had in mind that they were coming up the sidewalk really fast and Jacob was like holding on to her shoulders like flying up in the air and it was like a action shot so it turned out pretty good and I was I was pretty happy with it you know at first I was kind of like oh, I don't know if it's gonna work but you know hey I tried it out did it and it and it worked so so now I'm gonna kind of break you know show you the breakdown of the of the PSD file and I'll go section by section open up the folders and show you guys what's inside so first let's go with the, the background here oops let me bring that back this is the background the background layer so if i hide everything else to show the background that's it that's just the house there and what i did is you know i did some uh i put like a a dodge and burn layer there let me name that just so you can dodge and burn it's like dodge and burn layer there. Kind of darkened up the, the sidewalk here a little bit. Made it a little bit more grainy. Um, these are just little cleanups like on the sidewalk that I did on the house. And that was it. That's it for that. Atmosphere layer. This right here I added. Um, if I open this up. All it is is just little brushes. You know brushes that I blurred out. Like I grabbed the my brush tool and I had it on white and let me just make a quick layer here so what I did is uh, I just you know clicked here and it held my shift key click here shall hold my shift key did that and then went to filter blur Gaussian blur and blurred that out like that that's it and then I added a mask to it down here and I used my gradient tool here to kind of on the mask to do like an even mask you know just mask it out so it could kind of blend down you know so that's all you see here I, each, I added a few I added a few of them kind of going this way that way up you know so that's that layer Next one up is the shadows. That's the shadows of the bike. And if I put the kids in there, well, let me just show you. If I should put the kids in there, see this. So if you see the shadows, I want to I want to take them out one by one. Start with the bottom shadow. So I added creating shadows, realistic shadows. You gotta just you know you gotta do layers. Of shadows first you got to do like a main one kind of a, a light darkness kind of under or whatever you're trying to create a shadow of 
and then you just do another layer that's darker and then another layer that's a little bit darker as you get darker you want to get oops what did I get as you get darker let me zoom in here as you get darker to say like the, the, the of the wheel or whatever you're trying to create a shadow of you want to get really tight see I created another one this is another layer it gets darker as it gets to the object see and there's another one that's darker so that way it brings the actual uh, object to the ground because without see if I take that out still it still looks see it looks like it's floating it looks like it's not even on the ground but if I add another thin shadow right that's dark right on the wheel it makes that wheel touch the ground so that's the shadow layer the shadow uh, group layer they're all group layers and the kids are here if I open this folder up and start from the bottom the bottom layer is Juliana's blur see how it's if I if I hide it it goes away and if I put it back it's a blur so what I did is I just duplicated the this cut out of her so I'll show you real quick how I did that I just duplicated it I hit command J is a duplicate I go to the bottom one go to filter blur motion blur and basically get the angle that you're trying to create so I'm trying to follow the sidewalk angle so that was about minus 31 degrees there hit OK and then I'll put the I'll put Juliana back on top and then I'll put a mask on the on the on the blur layer and then I'll just paint away all the front excess like that see and it adds motion so that's basically what I did there let me put my layers back okay so and then there's Jacob let me delete this one Oops, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> All right, so now we got Jacob. Okay, so that's Juliana in the front there. Juliana in the front. Sorry if I kind of mess up a little bit because I'm trying to follow these layers as I go up. Sometimes I get confused. So then to add a little motion to the tires, uh, what I did is I copied the front tire and I pasted it up on front there. That's it right here. And then I did the same thing. I just pasted it up on front and then I went to motion motion blur well filter radio blur when you go to radio blur it'll create that like a spinning motion blur and then I just paste you know pasted it up on top put a mask over there kind of made it look really nice there and then let me put these back layers back here and put the atmosphere back let's see hold on a second all right so now uh, okay so jacob jacob where's jacob jacob so that's jacob there see he was actually just holding the the chair and then I just placed him over Juliana's shoulders and I I just cut you know um, cut out you know the arm that's kind of going back to make it make it look like he, uh, he's behind her head and then I added some front flares here to give it more atmosphere here's another one you know to get to kind of blend you know make it look like the sun's kind of beaming down but it also gives it some motion it gives it you know a little bit of motion to the to the image see that so that's the kids group layer and then what I added I added a, a you know a, blend, a, a filter to it I added a contrast uh, you know a, a levels 
to this whole uh, group layer there. To kind of give them a you know give them a little bit more pop. Let's see, so if I kind of move it down, yeah, you, know, you kind of could match them up to the background a little bit better. So I did that. Instead of doing each one by one, I just you know I hooked it up to the to the kids folder here and the way you do that so if I unhook it there you clip it basically so you create a this is how you do it let me just show you real quick so let me delete that so say I'm done with uh, fixing up all the the kids and whatever you're trying to put together and you want to create a, a group uh, you know kind of blend them in together all at once so you know you just kind of group them all into a folder and you go to levels and you hold the option key and you and, and you mouse over the right under the levels uh, kind of between the levels and the and the kids folder and you'll get that little arrow and just click on it that means this is clipped onto this folder so now when I you know, when I move the, the sliders, it'll just affect them only, not the entire image. See? So that's that. That's for that, you know, that's pretty much it. What I, that's pretty much what I did for them. And let's see. And then, after that, then I added another levels to kind of give the overall photo some contrast you know without any clipping so this this one was this one's gonna affect the entire image so if I move it it's affecting the entire image so these are some little you know little sliders that I kind of play around with to kind of make sure that everything's blending together it's getting more pop I don't want the front too dark uh, or you know the, the back if you know if you notice uh, backgrounds are always lighter than the front as things are farther, if things go farther away, they're lighter. Uh, they get more darker, and I mean, not they get more contrastier as they come up, as they're more closer to the foreground. So that's something to kind of keep an eye out for. And then, um, <coughs> excuse me. And on top of that is my dodge and burn layer. So if I open that up, and I put these back. This is where I do all the highlights with the dodge. So if I take them out one by one, you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's, uh, yeah, I'll hide that. I basically go over the natural highlights with the dodge tool on a 50% gray. So the way to do that, let me show you real quick, is you create a new layer by holding shift command N and then go to overlay fill it with 50% gray and then get your dodge tool here I usually go about 10 3 percent here and you just start kind of start painting over the the highlights just start painting all the highlights I'm doing a quick run here just for you guys so you can see so basically I do this you know but you know more in depth you know I take a, take my time I just go over all the highlights, make everything pop, make it look cartoony, you know. And then I'll do the same with the burn. I'll create a burn layer, and then I'll burn, burn the shadows. Yeah, just do it all like that. So that's basically it right there. That's just another dodge layer. Sometimes I'll do double dodge layer. I'll do a dodge layer on top of a dodge layer. I like to control these, um, you know, with the opacity. And um, so, yeah, now, you know, that's my burn layer there. And this one's to brighten up the eyes, brighten up the little, little whites of the eyes. So if I hide that, see, it gives a little pop to the eyes and the teeth. And this, all it is, is a levels layer with the mask on it. And I just paint in the white. All right, so now the sky. Let me show you the sky. So this is how I shot, 
how it looked when it shot the background. The sky was not a cloud in the sky. It kind of looked boring. So I went, uh, I had a few images of like some skies. So I decided to just drop in the sky. Bam. And it just makes it pop more. And then I wanted the sun to kind of pop out more. So I added a little, I added another like flare to it here. No, you can't see it with the. But anyway, that's just another layer there with a the flare. And then another layer with the flare. See that? To kind of show like the sun's kind of beaming down the street, you know. And it also looks like it makes, it, makes them look like they're going really fast. <laughs> Which wasn't my intention, but it turned out great. So, so that's the sky there. But hide everything that's what it looks like and this layer here is just an extra piece of hair that I decided to drop in there that I didn't I didn't get it I didn't get a great cut out of it so I did it I cut it out again and I just placed it in there and that was basically basically it and what I do is after I'm done with it after I'm kind of done working on it make sure everything looks good and put the shadows back in there there you go. So after I'm done with it, everything looks good. What I do is I'll make a, a snapshot of it on top there. And then I'll run an exposure X filter on it. Yeah, I'll run that. Let me show you guys real quick. And then I'll just find a good little, you know, filter that makes it look really good. You know, it's all up to you on this, on this part, how you want your image to look like. But, you know, I just, I usually like to keep it, make it look, well, well something like this. You want, I want it the look to look, to kind of, I want it to go for, for more of a cartoony look. So, yeah, so that's it. That was it. And I discard that. And then I got that. So that's basically it for this image. Um, nothing to it. I mean, you know, you have to know your Photoshop skills a little bit. You got to know how to kind of use the blending modes and and uh, but not too. It's just basic Photoshop skills. Basic Photoshop skills. I'm not doing anything crazy. It's just cutting out. Make sure the cutouts are really good. Know your pen tool. Know how to use the refine edge tool. Um, it's just basic Photoshop, Photoshop skills. Nothing too hard, nothing crazy. So that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Send me a message. Uh, give me a shout. You know, if you guys see anything that's funky, I don't care. <laughs> I like feedback. So, and I want to thank you guys for giving me, uh, you know, all the credit and uh, you know all the love and likes and stuff on my images and feedback I appreciate everything and um, hope to see you guys soon with another quick little tutorial or behind the scenes all right talk to you guys later have a good one thanks <laughs>